My grandfather was what people might consider the black sheep of the family and he was born in 1899. We believe that he had a troubled background, um, we're not sure exactly what happened, but he signed up for the, war, the First World War under age, so he, he went off to, to Durham Light Infantry, I think he was born in Wakefield, but he went off to Durham Light Infantry and signed up under age. So we think he was escaping an abusive family background, we're not 100% sure. So he went over to Germany, he was in Germany during the war. And then he was in, he was in the London Scottish Regiment and then he was also in the King's, or King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry as well. So he seems to have transferred to all the different um, regiments and he was also in Cologne in 1919 in the Army of Occupation. He loved to read, you could always find him reading books, obviously it ran in the family, he was my mum's father and um, there was always a book on the go but he also used to smoke a pipe and his pipe it reeked with you know, clouds of smoke all the time and um, when my parents moved from the big family house we used to have and we, they moved to a smaller house when they downsized we found his pipe in a bag up in the attic where he put it after he died and it still reeked and this is like 20 years later it was disgusting oh when I was researching um, his his army career, we couldn't find much at all, and it was very frustrating. Um, the only thing that I could really find was his medal card and his um, enrolment card for the Royal British Legion. Now, we believe this is because in 1940s, sometimes in the war, they they were raids where bombs fell on record offices, and we believe that a lot of his records were destroyed in World War II, which is such a shame. And um, that proved obviously quite difficult to to find anything else out about him, except for these. We've got a load of photographs of him. We've got him in a kilt when he was with the London Scottish. When I was younger, I never thought to ask him about what it was like during the World War II, what the trenches were like, and um, he never talked about it. He did tell me one thing, though. He taught me how to light a match the way that they would do in the trenches. Now, normally, most people would light a match that way. But when you're doing it that way, if there's a sniper in a trench across the uh, no man's land, they can see that light and they will shoot you dead. So he said you used to strike it this way and then you would cup your hand around the match and that you could, I think it was doing, I think you could light two cigarettes, I think it was, or maybe, th no, if you, if you lit three cigarettes you were dead, you could manage two because by this point the sniper would get you and even now I still strike my matches that way, I don't do that, I do that normally and um, that was the only thing I ever asked him and I wish I had more. We've got some old grainy pictures of him and we've got a little bit of really, really ancient video, but I wish I had more video of him because it would be so nice to be able to see him again properly and hear how he spoke and to see him in action really. Video is such an important tool to capture those family memories and keep them alive and pass them through the generations to newer family members.